My name is Cynthia Gaskill. I'm a veterinary clinical toxicologist at the University of Kentucky at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. And today I'm going to address five of the most common questions that we get about fescue toxicosis in horses. Um, the first question that often is posed is, what exactly is fescue toxicosis? Well, this is a poisoning condition caused by ingestion of fescue forage or fescue grasses that are infected with an endophyte um, that produces a, a toxin or a chemical that can affect horses adversely. The second question is, where is this a problem? Well, it can be a problem in many, many parts of the planet, but in central, uh, the, the southern and the central and the southeastern part of the country, this is where fescue grows predominantly. It's a very hardy forage that can withstand drought and heat very well. It often will outgrow other forages quite well, and it can provide good nutritional value, uh, but it does have some risks in certain classes of animals. Which uh, brings up the third question, which is, well, what are the effects of this uh, toxin that's produced by fescue, endophyte infected fescue? It uh, depends on the species, so I'll just mainly address the horse right now. Uh, it has different effects depending on the class of horse. It, it's especially problematic for pregnant mares, and especially in the, la the very uh, last part of their pregnancy. Um, it can affect the mare's ability to pr produce milk, so they'll have an agalactia problem, and it um, inhibits their ability to properly um, have the foal. And so we'll get prolonged gestation time, so foals will remain in the uterus for too long, they'll become much too large, and it can cause dystocia problems for the mare, and oftentimes you'll end up with a foal and a mare that, that die from the complications of the dystocia from her trying to have a, such a large foal. Uh, plus in, there's no milk for the foals that do survive, so it can be a, a real problem. Also, it can have effects um, during earlier parts of gestation, can affect reproductive abilities, so you can have low conception rates and other reproductive effects. Uh, there's potentially also problems in other horses that are not well known. Uh, there's not been a lot of research done yet on just non non-pregnant animals to know what sort of effects this might have, but we do know it has pretty significant effects on con blood vessels and their uh, and constriction of blood vessels, and so perhaps there will be some issues with proper release of heat, um, cooling down appropriately after heavy exercise in animals that are eating lots of fescue, endified infected fescue. Uh, one of the major toxins produced by this is called ergovaline, and we are doing some research here at University of Kentucky looking at uh, what levels of ergovaline may cause problems in different classes of horses. Um, another question is, well, how does this differ from the toxin or the signs that are seen in other species like cattle? In cattle, you'll see a, a, several different scenarios. One is what's called slummer slump, where cattle are just, they can't dissipate the heat properly. They just go and, and lie down under the shade or get in the water and stay there. So they don't eat properly, they don't feel very well. They can also get foot issues called fescue foot where the, they get constriction of blood vessels to the foot area and they can actually slough their hoofs and have other serious foot problems. Um, there's, there's a variety of other problems in other species. In horses, it is, is mainly the reproductive and the, and the uh, milk production issues that you see with uh, fescue toxicosis in horses. And the last question is, well, how should this be managed? In areas where there's a lot of endophyte infected fescue, the uh, many of the people that are in that area professionally do have good management practices, keeping pastures clipped so that the seed heads don't develop because that's the highest concentration of ergovaline will be in the seed areas. Also uh, taking mares, pregnant mares off of endophyte infected fescue pastures uh, at the, towards the end of the pregnancy so that they're not ingesting it the last few months of pregnancy. Um, some people also supplement the mares with uh, domperidone, something that will help to, uh, to counteract the problems that you can see with fescue. Uh, you can try re reseeding pasture so that you get rid of the fescue and put in other forages. Sometimes that can be expensive and the fescue does tend to want to come back, but that's another management practice that can be used. And those are some of the more, question, uh, the more common questions that we get on fescue toxicosis in horses. It's a very large and very important topic, um, but that's the basics.